Aloha, 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 beautiful soul. Welcome in Monday Me. Oh, I'm very happy to have you here and to guide you a little bit further through the maze hall of inner child work. And um, with inner child work, of course, we need to be very, very, very careful. Later on, I will talk with you about my three inner children and what I have been going through in the past week because it's really magical, I really think it's magical. Um, but for now, let us concentrate on what you can do with your inner child. And of course, the first question to, for me to ask you is, are you in connection with your inner child? And if you are not, do you want to be in connection with your inner child? Or do you think it's just like rubbish? It's totally fine, you know? I am not here to judge you on where you are in your, in your life, on where you are and which stage you are in your life. If you think inner child work is rubbish, then there's like 80%, probably maybe 90% of uh, the whole world population that also thinks it's rubbish. And the other 10 or 20%, they really see the benefits of having inner child work or of connecting with the inner child. <coughs> so it's completely up to you. I still appreciate you even if you do not want to do anything with inner child. For me, I have learned that my road to healing goes through the connection with my inner children. So I'm very grateful to have that connection. And I'm also very grateful for the fact that the connection is on a peaceful level. It wasn't at the beginning. They were teaching me a lot of things, especially about how much attention they needed, how little trust there was and like uh, how to really connect with them. I had to go through some phases before I really managed to have them as creators, as creators in my life instead of um, as survivors. So if you do not have uh, connection with your inner children and you're not interested in having connection with your inner children then maybe this video is not for you. So if you do have connection with your inner children the next question is of course is that a um, connection that you appreciate as being nice at this moment or is it a connection that you see as not of chaos? So let's Take this situation of that your connection is really nice with, the, with your inner children. That must have meant, that must mean that you have gone through some phases with them. Yeah. It may be that at the beginning that you are starting to do inner child work, especially from the whole Ponopono way, which is a very much more connection based way instead of a therapeutic way. So when you start off and connect with your child and you have in your head that you only want to have a nice connection with your child and that your, con uh, your, your child is utterly uh, happy to uh, receive your attention, I'm really happy for you, but you may get into a phase in which it is different. I uh, don't hope so for you. <laughs> It would be really nice that you can continue on this level and grow from there. But my experience is that I had to go through quite, quite some crap with my inner children before I managed to have a peaceful relationship with them, which is leveled. Like, I don't see them as a chaos creator anymore. So I relate with them, not from the perspective of hey, uh, you guys, uh, can you just take it easy? I relate with them from a perspective of, oh my God, you're teaching me so many lessons. So if at this moment your relationship with your inner child is a little bit chaotic, is not uh, based on a lot of trust, then know that you will be able to go through that. The only thing your inner child does is give you this reflection 
of whatever is there to heal inside of you. So when you when you see your connection with your inner child or when you see your connection with the outside world from the perspective of oh my god what are these people teaching me at this moment what is it that I don't want to see then you have the clues and uh, and uh, like the, this this big opportunity of healing your inner world and if there's anything I wish for you then that is it in whichever way that is it you healing your inner world will have an effect on the outside world you healing your relationship with your inner children has an effect on the outside world because it has an effect on you and I can tell you that now from experience before I was quite convinced of it maybe but I never felt it that way and last week I, I, I just want to, to, to tell you these kind of things so that you also see that there are opportunities in this work so I have always seen I have three inner children. I have a zero to two years old who is really into trust. Her her issue is really on trust base. Uh, I have a f I had a five year old who had everything to do with how I was dealing with myself in my business. That is the the biggest mirror she was showing me. And I have a almost sixty year old. She will turn sixteen this week. And uh, she she has quite some crap going on, really. It, she is not in a nice phase of her life. For me, it was the most most turbulent phase of my life. So the the almost sixty year old, I I think I already shared about her. She is going through a lot of grief, and as she does not have that basis of trust because the zero to two year old doesn't have that so how could the, the 16 year old ever have accumulated any trust in her life you know so because she doesn't have any trust in herself nor in the outside world there is a lot of projection there is a lot of um, uh, passive aggressive behavior and there is a lot of like anger and and sorrow and grief all stacked up and she has no clue how to deal with it so the two of us are working on that part and then the zero to two year old and, and we have beautiful conversations about angels nowadays <laughs> that, that seems to be the thing <laughs> So, like, it's fun to be around her, you know. And with me choosing every day to spend time with my inner children, all three of them, all three of them every day have the chance to express themselves. I am building trust inside of my zero to two-year-old. And with that, I'm building trust inside of the five-year-old and inside of the 60-year-old uh, and inside of the adult me, you know. So it works in all directions. And then the five-year-old, and this is the one that I want to elaborate a little bit on today. The five-year-old, I had a lot of conversations with her because she's really the pleaser. She was the pleaser of the family. And I was, I was helping her but she did it herself, but I was helping her to get the insights how to flip from being a pleaser to being like completely okay with herself. And that transition happened last week. So last week there was a moment I was on my bike and I was talking with my, um, with my inner children and the five years old said like, um, we had this conversation and then at some point she didn't feel, I didn't feel her at the spot where she would normally be. I felt her at a different spot and I, I, I just asked her, okay, so what, what is happening? <laughs> are, are you moving? Just let me know if there's anything you need me to help you with. 
And then the next day, I went on my bike back home, and uh, I had this conversation again, and it was not with the five-year-old anymore. And it was with that new space inside of me, the, the space where I felt her moving to, but it was not the five-year-old that was moving. It was a new inner child that was coming to fruition. And I, I tapped into the five-year-old that was almost not tangible anymore at that moment. And she said like, well, I have learned my lesson. There is no need for me to reside inside of you. I have taught the new girl the lessons that I have taken from being with you. And, and now it's up to you to take care of the new girl. But I am going. And I was so proud. I was like filling up with proud. And at some point, I managed to also connect with the new girl. And the new girl is around seven years old. And her, like, well, of course, trust is a major issue, it has been a major issue in my youth. But her issue is really like feeling, the feeling of being like picked up, being put from, or being taken from one environment, put into a new environment, making new friends there, adapting herself to that new environment, and then being picked up again, and then be put again in a new environment. I had four uh, primary schools in the age between six and 12, in six years time. That is massive for a child, especially when there's no communication. My mother had no clue about preparing myself. Now we can have all kinds of judgments about my mother, but I don't think it's about that. I, I always think that it was the experience I needed. So my five-year-old, she just said like, well, for me it's time to leave. I have done what needed to be done while being here in your, in your space. You have taught me what I needed to be taught, what I needed to, to learn while I was in your space. And I am saying goodbye. And I gave that, th those possibilities, I gave those teachings, I gave them already to the seven-year-old. She is ready for your next teachings. And now I have a seven-year-old. And I am learning in a new way to connect because an, a five-year-old needs different things than a seven-year-old, especially as my seven-year-old has already gone through two of those transitions. So she's really, she really feels lost. She really feels like I have no clue where I am and who I am. So, and for me, I really see it as an adult. I really see it as a new opportunity. Because my inner child work is my number one priority. When I do my inner child work, when I do that uh, certain inner child breath with them every morning, and on Friday you will learn a breath that I do with my inner children every evening. When I do those breaths and I help them ground, and I help myself to ground, I get all these inspirations and all these possibilities coming to me for what I can do with my work, with my business. So, and at the moment that there is chaos in my inner children, there is no way that I can perform well in my business. I'll be everywhere because they are everywhere. So for me, my inner children, they are my gateway to wherever I want to go. And if you, for whatever reason, you have difficulties choosing, you have difficulties staying in a certain, like, a balanced energy, you have difficulties 
in uh, aiming for something. You have difficulties trusting people or trusting yourself. Or if you feel there's a lot of chaos going around in the outside world or in your inside world, then reach out. Reach out to your inner children. And if you have no clue how, then reach out to me. I have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful exercises for that. I can really help you get to that next stage. And I would love to help you with that. Because I know how much peace and how much trust I am accumulating inside of me thanks to that work with my inner children. And I wish the same for you. Sending you much, much love. Love you, love you, love you. And see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, beautiful soul. If there's anything I want you to take from these videos, then it is the permission for you to shine your light. It's the most important thing. So go ahead, shine your light. I love you. Bye-bye.